<coughs> okay, my name is John Curry. I'm the editor of the History of Wargaming Project, and what I'm going to do is talk about Hunt for the Fletcher Pratt Naval Wargame. But first, there's a test question for you. Plus one for being uphill in ancient wargaming, who thought of it first? Well, has it a guess of Tony Barr? No, uh, no, it's a member of WD. Was it the notorious Mr. Barr? Uh, no, it wasn't. Can't think an old war gamer, early really? member of WD. Oh, He's there this weekend. Bob. Uh, no, old and Bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Richard. Yeah. Could have been, because he was one of those early war gamers. Oh, so he was. It was Will Wyler. Oh. Now what he did was he read Caesar's Gallic War. And in that, it, he thought it was very important being uphill. So when they were generating the first set of WRG rules, he said, you should have plus one for being uphill. I know this is true because Will Wyler said it, and secondly, Donald Featherstone said that the person who did it was someone who was reading Caesar's Gallic War and said plus one. So the two facts correlate together. So it was Will Wyler who was the first person. Anyway, that was just from the scrapbook of history. Okay. I first ran the Fletcher Pratt Naval War Game at the Conference of War Gamers in 2005. Uh, and the game seemed to work really well. It was highly entertaining. Uh, this is the battleship Mimoto being well and truly hammered with all those red golf tees at the hits. Uh, little triangle pieces of card are either torpedoes or firing arrows. Okay, next one please. So we're going to talk about the hunt for the game and then the valuation of the Pratt rules as a model of naval warfare. This is what I found. Okay, next one, please. Now, Donald Featherstone. He wrote his book, Naval War Games, in 1965, and that was the one which really revealed the Fletcher Pratt game again to the world. And that book <coughs> sold around the world many times, um, thousands and thousands of copies. Now, it came out at the right time uh, because Airfix Waterline ships in White Hole Hundred Scale arrived. So, I generated some ship cards, I had some old ships, I played the Ta Battle of Denmark straight. Then I found trying ships. You remember the trying ships? Let's get the next one, please. Um, and that's the air fix ones. Great figure, waterline people said, why are you producing a figure for wargamers? There are no, no one plays wargames with model ships. That's because there weren't any model ships at the time for people to wargame with. Let's see, scratch with them. Next one, please. Uh, this is a trying ship. This is actually an extremely valuable model now, by the way, for collectors. Uh, it's metal, plain box. Uh, it would sell for, I don't know, £50, maybe £100 on eBay nowadays. Okay, next one, please. Now, but the problem with the rules, and I started about in 2005, well, it rather it brought my mind back to it. So when I first played the rules, I realised the rules were actually for World War I. The gun ranges were for World War I. You could just look up in the textbook. Uh, they had no 18-inch guns. There were other some calibers missing, so some interwar World War II calibers were just not in the rules. Aeroplanes were used individually mounted on poles, and I thought, you know, was it? You know, the Ark Royal launches 30 aircraft, and they're all mounted individually on poles. You know, how could you possibly play a game like that? You just couldn't. They also called fighter planes pursuit planes. Uh, that's a bit of an archaic description of them. Uh, and it really suggests very early, you know, 1920s, 1930s terminology. So, these World War I rules were contradicted, though, by Don, who said, we talked about the game in his book, Naval War Games, and it was definitely about World War II games being used to simulate World War II at the time. So I was thinking, didn't they know the Japanese had 18-inch guns or something? Didn't they have access to French and skies? Didn't they know about the calibers? Didn't they know about the longer gun ranges? How did they deal with aircraft? How they deal with attacks by squadrons. And there were anecdotal accounts of this uh, around the world in various magazines, etc. And they were clearly talking about a different set of rules than the one produced by Donald Featherstone. So that, then it began the 30 year hunt. Next one, please. So, where were the actual rules? Uh, Tim Gow, of Mega Blitz fame, uh, supplied me a copy of the 1943 rules. And I thought, well, you know, that's what Don reproduced, more or less. Dan Dorsey, who relaunched the game in America uh, in the early 1970s, survived the 1973 and 1976 versions of the rules. They were both identical to the 1940 edition of the rules. 
1947 rules were actually from World War I. I know this because I've got a copy now, and it says this is a reprint of an earlier set. So where were the rules they were, were using? And it's taken me three decades to actually track down uh, the actual rules. Next one, please. Well, first of all, let's talk about who was Fletcher, Platt, Fletcher Pratt. First of all, he did not like being photographed. Uh, next one, please. Uh, there are very few uh, pictures of Fletcher Pratt out there. Maybe he was allergic to cameras or something. This is Sprague to Camp, as in the fantasy science fiction author. Uh, and there's Fletcher Pratt on the right. So, someone writing a biography of Fletcher Pratt, or attempting to, uh, couldn't because they couldn't find any photographs of them. And I can see, you know, you're a student, you can't find photographs, clearly you can't write a master's thesis on it. Hmm, okay, maybe not. But anyway, that's what they said. Is that not the effect? They couldn't. So, better people than me have hunted for them. So, there are very few in the public domain. Next one, please. Now, but we do have sketches of the man. Here he is. This is Pratt and his wife, Inga. Now, it took me a while to work this out, uh, who they were, but it's because he was short, because he was a flyweight boxer when he started, always a cigarette in the hand, uh, measuring the glasses, the crouched up figure, and his wife was apparently quite um, staggering and had basically long hands and delicate fingers, and so she was also an artist, so she sketched things. So then I suddenly started to realise that these sketches were not just random, they were actually real people playing the game. Okay, next one, please. So, who was Fletcher Pratt? Well, he was known as a fantasy and science fiction author. He was a military historian. So, his account of the American Civil War uh, is set by some to be the best one volume history of the American Civil War, and it's still in print now. And that's quite an achievement after all these years. He was also a breeder of monkeys. So, he lived in New York and he bred monkeys. <coughs> Um, he was also the creator of the Fletcher Pratt Naval War Game, which was clearly the, the crowning achievement of his life. It was far more important than all the other things which he did. Next one, please. 